Catalyst Browse has helped me numerous times to sometimes transform my shaky footage into something that's more usable. So in this video, we're going to jump inside of the software and I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing for yourself. First things first, let's talk about compatibility. If you have one of the newer Sony cameras, let's say released in the last four years, then you have the ability to use this software and use this feature. So here's a list of the cameras that I found and I'll place a link in the description below to see if your camera is on this list. But the main thing you want to keep in mind is that you have to have the obvious turned off. So you can either have it completely turned off or you can have active stabilization on. This will not work with IBIS on. The second thing is it only works with certain lenses. Of course it works with native Sony lenses and it also works with other E-mount lenses. I've tried it on the Sigma 24-70 and it works just fine. But I have tried it on certain manual lenses and it does not work. So the best advice I have for you is to test your lens and camera combo before you go into the field relying on the fact that you can use this software later because it may not work. So with all of that being said, let's jump into the software. This is Catalyst Browse. It's a software made by Sony, of course, and it's designed to work with their cameras and their file system. So if you look over on this side, this is where you're going to find all of your files and your directory, whatever you want to call it. But here I have the files here. So you can see if your file has this icon beside it, that means it contains stabilization metadata. And if this one, it contains lens breathing compensation metadata, which means you can do both to this particular file. So this is the one we're going to work with first. We're going to click on it. Then we're going to come down here to stabilize. You're going to hit analyze. And once it's done analyzing, you can look over here on the right hand side. It says the cropping amount. That's what it's recommending to get it stable for this in and out point. What I want to do is change the out point because the out point is typically when I stop recording. So I'm flipping my camera a certain way to hit the record button so it can stop. So we're going to move that in. And as I move it in, you can see that the cropping amount goes down. So normally I'm pretty stable with the camera anyway. So you can see these lines. It kind of gives you an overview of how stable I was during those moments. So kind of look at it like a EKG monitor. So when your heart beats, it jumps up and jump up, 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 do, 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 right. But if you flatline, that means there's no movement, right? So this is what I want to get out because let's say this is cool, right? But I need this clip to be just a little bit longer or I want to catch the front part of the clip, but the front part of the clip is not as stable. So I want to bring this all the way back here and that's, I want to use this full amount, but I want it to be stable. So that's cool. The cropping amount is 0 0.06, which means my corrected crop resolution is going to be 3265 by 1836. So a little bit smaller than the 4k file, but that's cool because nine times out of 10, I'm editing in a 1080p timeline anyway. So this is still more than enough. Now, if I was doing something crazy, like where I was like running or something like that, then this amount would be higher, which means this amount right here will be lower. But this is cool for me. I just needed the front part of this clip to tie everything together. So I needed a few more seconds of this clip in order to make my edit go smoother. So once I have this, make sure I select my in and out points. I can hit playback. You can see the before and after. It takes these bumps out here and this side is smooth. We can go back and play it again by hand. So just this huge bump right here, you can see that it's stabilized. Now, once we have that, we go up here to the top, export. You want to choose the location where you want the file. Make sure all of this is what you want it to be. I want to export back out in xlog3, same as source. Same frame size. I think it's going to upscale to 4K anyway. Frame rate, same, frame rate, same as source. And then this is normally correct. You want the highest megabytes per second. Scroll down a little. You're going to go into the advanced settings. You're going to make sure you use mark in and mark out points. It's going to take the points that you select and render those into the output. 
if you uncheck this, it's going to render the whole file and it's going to give you that cropped in resolution that we do not want. So hit that, then we hit export. All right, another example is going to be this clip. So this is an old clip that I shot, actually shot it on the gimbal. So even when you're shooting on the gimbal, sometimes you want to take out those steps, right? So everything else is smooth except for that up and down movement of you walking. So we're going to come in again. This is probably when I started recording. I hit the record button and over here, I can kind of tell this is when I hit the stop record button. So it's pretty stable overall, but there is a step right here, as you can see. So I want to start, maybe I'll start here. So let's go in. come back and maybe I stop here so this is the huge portion that I want to take out not much of a difference but it will make a difference in the final edit if I want to keep this regular speed cool so one thing you want to be mindful of when you export a clip that's 4K60 is down here. It may have you exporting at 60 megabits per second or something like that. Make sure you double check it and you want to go down to the highest one that you can. So we're going to export this. Hit OK. The time is going to be dependent upon your system that you're operating on if you have a slow computer this is going to take all day when i tried to do it on my old mac it took at least five minutes but now that i have one of the newer macs it only takes about 15 to 20 seconds depending on the size of the file so let's go over here to davinci resolve where i've already imported that first clip this is the step at the beginning then we want to take that step out on the second clip so now you no longer can see that step Let's do it one more time. That's what I wanted to remove, that bump. No more bump. So in the pinch, this is very, 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 very helpful. Especially if I just needed that two more seconds to fulfill that space in the edit and I didn't want it to look like that. All right, so we go back to the other clip. which is here. There's a small bump there. And I'll go and grab this clip so that I can show you, which will be this one. It's a small bump here, I can tell. I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen. But if we come over here to this one, it's a lot smoother. I don't think I kept this regular speed in that edit, but if I wanted to, I had the option. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already. I will be posting more editing tips and other things that I find useful in my workflow. So until the next video, peace.